So let's summarize the match Z transform. Z transform method. So on the plus side, and that's a really great plus here. So we have got just real valued, real valued processing because of real valued coefficients. So on the negative sign, I should draw it actually a bit smaller here. We've got a slightly different impulse response. Response compared to the impulse invariance method. And this is just because of the wrong zero mapping mapping method. But on the other hand, it's convenient and it gives us definitely complex conjugate zeros and poles. So therefore that's not so dramatic. And um, we see that it's quite reasonable to do is if we are comparing basically the impulse responses of the impulse invariance method, which is on the left here. So that's the impulse invariance method compared to the matched Z transform on the right here. And so so we see that there's not much not much difference between these two impulse responses here. So we see only at the end here at time step at some um, sample 100 here if we for example compare the endpoints here we see that these two sine waves end up slightly different here so that there's a slight slightly different different phase here in the impulse response so we see here at the end point at 101 that in the match that transform this has reached already its, its plateau whereas in the impulse invariance here it's already rising so therefore there seem to be a slight phase shift maybe of one sample or two or something like that but um, in real applications, this, this would usually won't matter.